Hello and welcome. Today we're working on the practice exam one, the very first exam in financial accounting or principles of accounting. And so we're working our way through this practice exam. This is the third of three videos and here we're going to do financial statements if we're given a trial balance. Hello, my name is Jeff from Finally Learn. We're working our way through the principles of accounting. So we're in chapter one, introduction to accounting. Now, if you need to know that, you need terms and you need to know the accounting equation. And then in chapter two, recording business transactions, these are journal entries and doing financial statements. All right, so here's our problem. We have a trial balance and it's after the adjustments have been made. So that's a chapter three topic. But here we have a trial balance. And what is a trial balance? Well, when you're new, you think, well, this must be a financial statement, but it's not. This is an internal document that just lists all the accounts and their balances, and it has debits and credits. So this is Swang Inc. and the adjusted trial balance at the end of December 31st. And so we have a debit column, we have a credit column. So we figure out the balance of each account, and we just list all the accounts. Now, we start with all these here are assets. We start with assets. So cash, accounts receivable, inventory, so on, are all assets. Next, we have all liabilities. So we have assets first, then liabilities. And so all these are liabilities, including unearned revenue. Then we have the equity accounts. So common stock, retained earnings, and dividends. Now, one quick point here. We'll see this on the financial statements. Retained earnings, we never make an entry to retained earnings until we get to the end of the year, end of the period. So this 115000 is the January 1 balance, the beginning balance of retained earnings, and we'll have to adjust it to figure out the ending balance of retained earnings. Dividends are also equity, so we have three equity accounts, common stock, retained earnings, and dividends. We have one revenue account, and then we have several expense accounts. Now, one thing we, the reason why we do this is we list all the accounts and all the debits and credits to make sure that our debits and our credits equal. Accounting is an old system. Uh, it predates um, electronics and computers. And so we had to do a lot of things by hand, you know, centuries ago. And so we have to figure out the balance of each account and make sure our debits and credits equal. If they don't, then we know we have a mistake and we have to fix that mistake before we can go on and do our financial statements. But here is our adjusted trial balance and we'll go with financial statements. So here's what we have. Now, what are our financial statements that we need at the beginning? Well, we really have the statement of cash flows, but we're not gonna do that yet. Uh, that is a topic that's a little bit more challenging. So we're gonna do the income statement, the retained earnings statement, and the balance sheet. But the statement of cash flows, is not really something we do at the very, very beginning of accounting. And so in chapter one and two, we mentioned we have the statement of cash flows. We don't have to do that. So we want to do the first three, which are the income statement first, and then the statement of retained earnings, or retained earnings statement, and then the balance sheet. All right, so let's do this. Let me, uh, I've set up the headings just to make life a little bit quicker for us. So we will always want to put the name of the company, the, the statement, so here's the income statement. And for the income statement, it's for a period of time. And the period of time is for the year ending December 31st. Now we would put um, 2025 or whatever the year uh, would be here in this case. So we just go ahead and put the year. So here's what I want to do. We want to grab for the income statement, we're going to grab the revenue and the expenses at the very bottom. So I'm going to copy, if you don't mind, I'm going to copy and I'm going to paste. And I don't need these, um, I don't really have columns for debits and credits anymore. So don't think of these as debits and credits. These are just the balances in each account. So what we have is service revenue. I'm going to make that a dollar amount. And then all I'm doing is I can add up the all the expenses and move the total over. So I'm gonna do a sum of all these expenses. 
and that's 227,000. And so I need to have a underline here to show that is a subtotal. I've done something, I've done some math. And so we have revenues minus these expenses and the expenses are 227. So what we're gonna have is, this is gonna be a net, looks like a net loss, a net loss of 210,000 minus 227 because we have a net loss looks like of 17,000. So I need to double underline and we're finished with the income statement. So the income statement is just revenues minus expenses. And then if our expenses are larger, then we end up with a little bit of net loss. Now the next one, we're gonna do not an income statement, but this is gonna be a um, statement of retained earnings or a retained earnings statement. So statement of retained earnings, we're gonna start with beginning retained earnings. And then we're going to add to that, um, we can say plus net income, less uh, dividends, and we'll have ending retained earnings. So that's our format. And if you were with us on the earlier part of this uh, practice exam, the earlier video, we had some short answers where you had to have, if you know the beginning and you know the dividends, you know the ending, calculate the net income. Well, here, this is another way to test it. So our beginning retained earnings is what? Well, our beginning retained earnings is given at 115,000. So I'm just gonna grab that number, 115,000, plus the net income, right? Which is, happens to be a loss of the 17,000. And then do we have dividends? I think we do. Dividends are 9,000. So I'm gonna subtract that out as well. And here I'm gonna put, um, just to make it easier to do the math on this, I'm gonna make this a negative in front of everything. I'm gonna make it a negative 9,000. And so what's our ending retained earnings? Our ending retained earnings is gonna be a total of 89,000. And so we're gonna double underline, and I'm gonna put dollars everywhere to make sure you know it's in dollars. So we have beginning retained earnings plus um, uh, net income, but here the net income is negative, so we're gonna to have to subtract that out, less the dividends of 9,000, and we end up with retained earnings, ending retained earnings of $89,000. All right, now, what comes next? Our next one is the balance sheet. Our balance sheet, remember, is assets, liabilities, and equity. And so here, the way that date works is it's only for the period 1231, and it's not for the period for one single date here, 2025. All right, so the date on the balance sheet is a single date where the date on the income statement and the statement of retained earnings is for a period of time, a year ending. All right, so the balance sheet, we're gonna list the assets and the liabilities and the equity. All right, so here, um, we're gonna start with, I'm gonna put a heading here, so assets, and I'm just gonna grab all the assets from the trial balance. So we've got cash, all the way through buildings. So I don't have to type all that over again. Um, here, I'm gonna put this over one more column. And I'll get rid of the, the underlines here in a minute. So here we have the total assets. What are our total assets? Our total assets are, we add them up, and it's 364,000. Now I'm gonna get rid of all the Lines here, no borders, but I will put double underline here. We need a, a line and double underline to show, hey, this is our total, total assets. All right, so half of our balance sheet is, is uh, complete. And remember on the balance sheet, it is the accounting equation, which is assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. 
So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to do liabilities. And what are our liabilities? Our liabilities are, we have about five of those. So our liabilities are given. And we need to know a total here, our total liabilities. are apparently 55,000. I'm going to get rid of all the extra lines. And I just need a, an underline. I don't need a double underline yet because we have total liabilities. And we're going to do equity now. So our equity, we have on equity, we have common stock and we have retained earnings. We're not going to put dividends on the balance sheet here in this case. So we're going to put these two, the common stock and the retained earnings. So common stock is correct, but retained earnings. We have to be careful because we just calculated the new balance of retained earnings, and that's 89000 So what is our total equity? Well, our total equity is apparently 309. So I'm going to get rid of the, the lines here, the borders. I do need a single underline for total equity. And then I'm going to add the equity um, and uh, the liabilities. So I'm going to say call this total liabilities and equity. I'm going to take the 55 plus the 309. That equals 364. Now watch, that's what our total assets are. So our total assets here and equity, um, total assets have to equal total liabilities and equity. Our balance sheet has to balance is another way to say it. And so I'm going to put dollar signs. So here we have our financial statements. So let's go back and review. We have the income statement, revenues minus expenses. We got a net loss of 17,000. I'm gonna get rid of some lines here. The statement of retained earnings is for a period. So we have beginning retained earnings. We subtract out the net loss. We normally we add the net income. We subtract out dividends. We have ending retained earnings of 89,000. Now we do our balance sheet. And on the balance sheet, we have all the assets. We just add them up. Our total assets are 364,000. I'm going to do this um, as a heading so we know it's a heading. Liabilities is a heading. So we have total liabilities, we owe 55,000. And then we have equity. And so once we get to our total liabilities and total equity, we add that. And we should have total liabilities and total assets equal because that is the balance sheet.